Namaste. I'm going to talk uh, today a little bit about the importance of proper alignment for the practice of yoga asana. Alignment is a subject that not many people understand very well, but it's very important in the practice of yoga. If a person does not have the proper alignment as they do the asana on account of some unresolved trauma or injury, then a person will not only injure the body as they do asana, but they will not be properly working on the karmas and the trauma in the energetic body. And they will not come into a deeper state of realization. This is my student Neil. He's going to be uh, helping to demonstrate the concepts. I've noticed in his forward bend, a very simple asana, one slight misalignment, uh, which will be very useful as a demonstration of the concepts. So I'm going to ask Neil to bend forward for us. From the side, it appears as if his forward bend is in good alignment. So we will show from a different angle. Watch closely and see if you can notice the misalignment here. Did you notice it? We'll show it again and point out exactly where his muscle begins to pull tight and he shifts. So as he bends forward, notice the right shoulder is going lower than the left. And right there, he starts to move his back out toward the right hand side. His arms are going slightly to the right rather than straight down very subtle. Now there are many possible causes of a misalignment like this. We're going to demonstrate several indicators. It's important to bear in mind that this is not a medical analysis and that you should not necessarily try these techniques at home because it requires a very highly developed sense of perception to be able to notice the misalignment and uh, even these simple indicators uh, in clinical studies conducted by doctors it's not very precise or accurate necessarily they can be guidelines to help a person to come to the, the right place but it's not necessarily a way to diagnose for that purpose an x-ray needs to be taken Doctors who have been trained, massage therapists, chiropractors, yoga therapists. Uh, it has been shown in clinical studies that as these practitioners of healing who have many hours of training use these techniques, that it can be very inaccurate, that the x-ray is the only way to truly see. However, for a yogi who has developed a good sense of his energetic body and the trauma within it, he sees the tension in his own body. It's possible for him to see also the tension in the body of someone else. And so a yogi can, can help you to see these things and help to teach you to be aware. But just doing yoga slowly, consciously, with the right awareness can help to bring about the awareness as well. So to demonstrate this, I'm going to ask Neil to stand straight, just to stand relaxed, comfortable as normal. Just stand as he normally does. And as we look, we notice that his left shoulder here is much, much higher than the right shoulder. It's very noticeable. This is one sign that there's a misalignment there. Another way that we can discern this is by trying to find the, the hip bones of a person. On some people it's hard to find. On Neil it's a little bit hard to find because he has some, some padding here. It's hard to notice where the, the hip bone stops. But if you can find those on a thinner person it's easier. Then you can notice which one of those is higher. So that's one thing that can be looked at 
in some cases one can seem quite a bit higher than the other and when the hips are out of alignment it will make one of the legs come longer than the other the leg may not be actually physically longer than the other but because of the misalignment it will come out further and so to demonstrate this you can get Neil to lay down on his back and then to lift your legs up slowly and gently and just keep them as they are and you see that if you could keep your feet flat with the ceiling we can notice very easily that this left heel is just a little bit higher than the right heel so you can come back out of that pose thank you <clears throat> An easier way to really notice this, because a more natural way, is sitting on the floor with the back against the wall. We won't demonstrate that because it may be hard to see in the video, but if someone sits, well, you could demonstrate. Sit with your back against the wall and the feet out, and then you get someone else to look, and again, it's looking to me as if this left heel is coming out a little bit further. So this may give some indication. Like I said before, this is not a clinical analysis, and even trained doctors are often wrong. They try to come con to conclusions this way, but it can give some indication of what we're talking about. Another technique that can be used is to use a tape measure. And if you can find the hips, you can measure from one hip bone to the ground and the other hip bone to the ground and compare the measurement. Uh, it's, it's more accurate and easier to find if you use the navel as a starting point. So if you can lift your shirt just a little bit there, Neil. I'm going to get you to hold this at your navel. And I'm going to go down with this to the inside of your heel. And to measure this from your navel to your heel and compare the length of each leg. So this one, 45, a little bit less than 45 inches here. And so now the left foot. is a little bit more than 45 and a half. They say a difference of 1 8 inch is considered normal. But uh, for him, the difference is almost an entire inch, which is a great, great amount. So there are many potential causes for this sort of uh, misalignment. One of the most common would be muscle strain in the back. Uh, this could come for various different reasons. It could come from a back injury, a neck, in neck injury, a hip injury, a leg injury, a knee injury, a foot injury. Many different sorts of injuries could lead to a misalignment of the bones and tightness in the muscle. It could just be a muscular thing. Tightness in the muscle alone could pull and that tension could cause the bones to pull out of alignment. So we're going to try to find the source here of this particular misalignment. Now when there's uh, muscle strain it's very likely that there is, in the energetic body, unresolved trauma. And so I'm going to ask you, do you feel any tension, tightness, or pain in your back? I don't currently. You know, so. uh, do you ever feel any pain or tightness in your back? Yes, when I bend, when I do the forward bend, I feel uh, tightness on my in my right lower back. In your right lower back, you feel. Mm -hmm. Can you touch where that is? Yeah, it mm -hmm. happens uh, right about here. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you feel some tightness right there. Uh -huh. Okay. And I can feel that as well compared to his his other muscles here in the back that's much tighter. A massage therapist would realize that there's some tension there in the muscles. And so this could happen for a variety of different reasons. Um, the spine, if you'll turn to the side for me, the spine has a natural curvature, like an S-shape like this. That's normal, that's natural, but 
the spine in the back here, it goes pretty straight. However, sometimes you'll get the S-curve like this, in a condition we call scoliosis. Uh, a curvature to the spine like that could be pulling the muscles unduly. Also, it could be uh, vertebrae twisted around or broken or pieces of it deteriorating. And that could cause some misalignment, some tension there in the back. One technique Ayurveda uses is to look at the tongue. So if we look at the tongue, the middle of the tongue, sometimes there's a line there, but either way the middle of the tongue will indicate the spine. And it may be kind of hard to see, but in the back part of his tongue here, you can see some cracking shapes there. I'm going to try to show you a close-up. And that cracking in the middle of the back of his tongue could indicate that there could be some pain in that part of his back. Toward the tip of his tongue, we notice a little bit of stuff there, which could indicate some pain in the neck area. Okay. Do you have any pain or tightness in your neck area? I do. I have a general tightness in, in my neck, lower neck area here. Yeah, I can feel that. Okay, so if you'll turn back around for me, what I'm going to do is try to scan your, your body. You can also just try to feel. If you don't feel the subtle energies too well, you can feel just the physical spine. I'm going to try to feel uh, um, that area of his tongue corresponds to the low back here. And so starting around here, we should check these vertebrae. And see, we can also check the whole spine for the curvature. His spine is curving just a little bit like this. He's got very, very mild scoliosis going on. Um, but as we check these vertebrae, I start to feel tension around here. And, and right about there, this vertebrae, I, I feel, is going that way. An x-ray could confirm that. So there's a little bit of misalignment of the vertebrae there. And that's causing probably a tension here in his back. Now, yeah, right, right here in particular, there, this is probably the origin, right there. And up here, it's a little bit out, up here a little bit, but right around here, these couple of vertebrae right there, very much out of alignment, causing the tension there. As you do your forward bend very slowly, mm -hmm. I want you to tell me when you feel, begin to feel that tension there. Uh, yeah, I feel it. So you're starting to feel it right there. Mm -hmm. And so as you try to keep continuing to go forward, you feel that you're trying to pull to this direction? And I do, yes. Okay. So what I want you to do is come back up, mm -hmm. come all the way back up, and then I want you to slowly, slowly bend just until you start to feel that tightness there. And I want you to stop. So you're starting to feel some tightness there. Mm -hmm. Now, what you're feeling, is this a physical strain that you're feeling? Yes. Okay, so you're feeling a physical strain. And so to, to compensate for that, he's been going to the side so he can continue forward in his bend. He's not bent too far. I want you to, to come back up out of it and turn to the side for me. Okay. So we can get the side view. Okay. And... <clears throat> <clears throat> go ahead and bend forward for me again and stop when you come to that point. Yeah. So this is how far he can go until he feels this strain. And so now I want you to hold that there. You feel a little strain? Yes. So come <clears throat> back slightly, slightly. Now I want you to just stop there feeling the slightest of a strain. Breathe. Just hold it and breathe and feel what you feel. Feel the tightness in the muscle. Feel the emotions. Feel whatever you feel and just feel it. As you practice your asana this way, going only to that point of strain, very, very slight strain, if you hold carefully that way, mm -hmm. then in time, after maybe 30 seconds or so, you'll feel a release of the tension. And then it's possible to go further. Do you feel that release? I do. Okay, so then go just a little further till you feel the strain. 
And you're going very straight now, I can see. Yeah. You feel the strains will come yeah. back, back slightly, yeah. slight, not too much, and slightest strain and then stop there. Okay. And hold that and breathe. And you can feel what you feel. And as you do your yoga in this way, you'll come to the awareness of the trauma and you may feel emotions unresolved from an injury. And so you can, you can come back out of it. You don't want to overdo it. You want to do practice like this very, very slowly. And then over time, you will get the ability to move forward with proper alignment. But it takes maybe many months of practice. In this way also you work on the, the emotions and the feelings and the energy blockages there in the energetic body of the trauma. As you were holding that, did you feel some, some emotion? I did. I did. What were you feeling? Uh, I felt a little abandonment was one emotion that came. You out. felt a feeling of abandonment. So that's good. You, you, the asana done in this way was bringing your awareness to that. And as your awareness comes to it, that energy is released from your, your body. Okay, so now I want you to, again, as you were doing before, to bend forward and touch your toes. Okay. And I want you to hold that for a few moments, okay. and I'm going to ask you how that's affecting the tension in your back. Okay. So he's bending forward, and he's curving to the side as before to compensate. As he's been doing, he's been forcing through. This is the problem if you force yourself in an asana. If your teacher, if you're not able to bend and your teacher jumps on your back or pulls you up, you're forcing it. We'll see how he feels after he's forced through this. So that's probably good. You can come slowly back up. Mm. And so how does your back feel after that? It feels tight here. So it feels tight. Yeah, feel okay. Nice, yeah. So now let's try to go as we did that second time, just until you feel the strain. Okay. And then to stop okay. and just hold that, feeling the strain, and okay. breathe and hold that for a few moments. So keep holding. It's probably good. You can come slowly back out of that. Everything's slow and easy in yoga. We don't want to force anything. It's never a jerking movement. Maybe in one asana, the bow, we need to do a jerking movement. Otherwise, it should be very smooth, gentle. It takes some muscle to do some asanas properly, but every movement should be smooth, flowing energy. And then we hold the asana for a while so it can have its benefit. Not too long, just for a short time, 30 seconds, a minute. So how does that make you feel to do that asana in that way? It feels a lot looser. Yeah. So your, yeah. your back feels looser in that yeah. place. So doing the asana in that way uh, heals his injury. Mm -hmm. It brings him to awareness of the subconscious feelings, the energy blockages in the energetic body. It brings mm -hmm. his consciousness into realization. Mm -hmm. And it, it heals his body. It improves his flexibility mm -hmm. and his health. It improves his alignment. Thank you. Thank you. Namaste.